Gentlemen, will you please rise while I administer the oath? Please rise. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties on which you are employed, and do you further swear that you do not advocate nor are a member of any political party or organization that advocates the overthrow of the government of the United States or of this state by force or violence? If you agree, answer, I do. I do. Be seated, gentlemen. Gentlemen, I wish to congratulate you. I also wish to thank your families here today for supporting you in applying as patrolman recruit for the Cincinnati police. This time, I would like to introduce your chief of police, Colonel Schrotel. It is a privilege indeed to extend greetings to you who are here in behalf of your representative in the present recruit class. It is significant that your support at this moment adds strength and sincerity of purpose that is so necessary as these men address a new and exciting career. From now on, you are policemen, and your duty 24 hours a day, every day, is to protect the lives and property of the citizens you have sworn to serve. Why does a man become a policeman? There are many reasons. Some are interested in working with people. Others want to devote their lives to public service. There are those intrigued by the excitement that service and policing offers. Whatever the reasons, once a man becomes a member of a police force, he is judged by his performance and results. Results are the key to a successful police officer. Results in suppressing crime, arresting offenders, and in maintaining the peace. These results are obtained only by hardworking individuals, well-trained and well-led, men who are dedicated to ensuring the rights of all people under the law. The United States Supreme Court has pointed out that the highest duty of a police officer is to know and to follow the law. In this regard, a thorough understanding of state and municipal law is vital to every officer. The federal constitution is the supreme law of the land. It secures the blessings of liberty for all United States citizens. Every provision of the Constitution is aimed at the preservation of the basic freedoms of the individual. It restricts governmental control over citizens to lawful processes and thereby severely limits police powers. Law enforcement officers should be aware of these limitations to avoid violating the rights of citizens. A good knowledge of the law is part of the professional preparation expected of every officer. We'll be over about 8 o'clock for a little bridge or poke or something, Bill. Okay, right. Rob, we'll see you. Hiya, Mark. Hi, Bill. Your face is dirty. <laughs> I'll see you, Rob. Bye, Bill. scrutiny, and his appearance and conduct, publicly and privately, often shape the public's attitude toward the entire police organization. Good afternoon. Hello. 
May I see your driver's license and registration card, please? Oh, yes. Would you please take it out of the holder, ma'am? I beg your pardon? I cannot examine your driver's license in the wallet. Would you please remove it? Miss Hanson, you went through the stop sign at the intersection of 42 and Gray Street. Oh, really? Well, I'm sorry. I didn't see any sign. It's there, and I'm going to issue a citation for a violation of the state law. Well, you don't... you don't have to do that. I told you I was sorry. Miss Hanson, you went through a stop sign, not only endangering your life, but the lives of other people. Well, I'm sorry. I don't usually drive like that, but it's just that the... The car is so new, and I've had it for only a few days, and I guess I did have my mind on how beautifully it was driving. Here's your driver's license and registration. Also, this citation requires your appearance personally within the next 48 hours. All right. A career in law enforcement is difficult and demanding. Once an officer has taken his oath of office, he steps from the backstage peace and privacy of civilian life into the permanent onstage spotlight of public scrutiny. The public expects him to be a superman, and he must strive to be one. On and off duty, his faults will be magnified in the eyes of the public. A police officer cannot spare any effort to make everything he does ethically sound. You know, Joe, it's a funny thing. My wife likes social life so well that she's planning another picnic this week. Then I might even have a beer myself. Hot weather, it'll taste pretty good. Oh, you're just too lazy. <laughs> the personal shortcomings overlooked by his friends and neighbors while a civilian are immediately exaggerated once he becomes a police officer. Every day of his life, on and off duty, people will be measuring his personal behavior against their idealistic mental picture of a police officer. His wife's appearance and behavior, the way his children behave, his drinking and smoking habits, the language he uses, the condition of his home and yard, the way he drives a car, He talks on the radio, his credit rating, his political activity, his church attendance. Almost every detail of his professional and private life will be analyzed and judged by the public. Good. I think it's 1 30. Betty and Mike, excuse me, I have to get dressed, go to work, I have to be there too. Yeah, you better go change. Okay, I mean, they will see you in a few days then. Thank you. Thanks for having us over. Bye. Bye. See you later in the evening, honey. Bye. 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 Making the transition from civilian to police officer is extremely demanding. Some time ago, one of our former presidents 
put it like this. No one is compelled to choose the profession of police officer. But having chosen it, everyone is obliged to perform its duties and live up to the high standards of its requirements. To join in that high enterprise means the surrender of much individual freedom. The police officer has chosen a profession that he must hold at all peril. He is the outpost of civilization. He cannot depart from it until he is relieved. A great and honorable duty to be greatly and honorably fulfilled. A police officer has enormous authority. He can deprive a man of his liberty or, in extreme cases, his life. This power carries grave responsibility. In order to properly execute it, he must have a good understanding of the laws of arrest and his limitations under these laws. In order to perform your duty successfully, you have to know the law, the Constitution, the civil rights of the individual, the state statutes, and your municipal ordinances. We're not lawyers, but we have to know the laws so we can properly enforce them. You have to know the grounds that you stand on or you're lost. Sometimes you make a decision in a split second whether or not to arrest whether or not to use your gun. It might take the courts months to decide if your action was legally correct. Laws are changing and becoming much more complicated. You have to keep going back, reading the court rulings and the Supreme Court decisions to see how they affect you. Good law enforcement is the common sense, impartial and unbiased enforcement of the law. Police patrol is the basic means of all law enforcement. It is essential for protection against criminals. The patrol officer must be constantly on the alert. He must be ready to respond to any emergency. Eight one three to seventy Ashland Road in Paradise View. Go ahead. Car eight thirteen. Signal 31A on Nail Road, one mile west of the airport. Ambulance has been called. Go ahead. 813 to 70, okay on the 31A in route. Okay on the 31A in route. When you're dispatched to an accident, upon arrival, the first thing you do is check the injured. If there is an injury and the ambulance has not been dispatched, you call in for one. While you're waiting for the ambulance, make the injured parties as comfortable as possible and, if necessary, render first aid. After this is done, take whatever steps are necessary to protect the scene and prevent additional accidents. Try to determine from the scene who is at fault by the person's own admission or any available physical evidence around and near the accident. 
get the names and addresses of all witnesses, and fill out the proper reports. Sir, were you a witness to this accident? Yes, sir. May I have your name and address? John Becker, Galleon, Ohio. Where were you when the accident occurred? I was approaching from the east. What did you see, or how did the accident happen? I saw this car come around the bend at a high rate of speed, went out of control, skidded into the pole. Can you give me any idea on the car's speed? It'd be hard to estimate since it was a blind corner. Thank you for your information, Mr. Becker. If we need anything else, we'll contact you in the future. Yes, sir. Then, as soon as you can, you clear the street and get the scene back to normal. The first thing a new policeman should do when he goes on his beat is to get to know his district. When you are sent on a call, know the shortest route to a certain street or place of business. Know the people who normally reside and work in the district. They are the ones who are going to be in trouble and need our help. The more we know about them and their businesses, the entrances and exits, the location of safes, the persons, their habits, the more we will be able to be of assistance in an emergency. Good morning, sir. I'm Officer Preon. Glad to know you, Dal Stevens. I see from the sign that the station's under new management. Yes. I'd like to get, obtain some information for my security files. Where are your night lights, sir? I had to leave the blue room lights going overnight. Mm-hmm. And uh, where is your safe at, sir? Right over there in the corner. Would you show it to me, please? Yeah. That's very good, sir. You have to stay alert, as alertness is a major factor in crime control. Try to avoid getting into any set pattern of patrol. Play it the way you see it. For instance, when you start out from a spot, work your way in the other direction. The next time, start out from the same spot, but then double back and go over the same area. Try to be as unpredictable as possible. A patrol officer must develop his powers of observation he should also be suspicious. He should be constantly looking at people and at places, evaluating what he sees. He should know what he sees. He should know what looks right and what looks wrong. He should know what time the stores close, what lights are left on. I'll be out of car at Northwest Corner, Stanley Webster, checking a suspicious truck, sparked by a business place. You are observing a situation where things aren't as they should be. You're suspicious. A possible B and E? First of all, you don't rush into the building alone. If you do, whoever is inside may possibly escape from another exit, or you might even be attacked from ambush. Radio for more help. Help to cover the entrances and exits and prevent escape. Then, station yourself in a position to keep as much of the building under surveillance as possible pending arrival of reinforcements.
Yeah, I've got a broken window there. And the might not be inside. Okay, man. Keep the press covered here and blow it up. Okay. You set up a plan, and then some of you go inside to search the place. Never less than two men. This will cool the urge of anyone inside to start shooting. He might start shooting anyway, but at least you'll have help. You never relax when you make one of these searches. You go in that building with the supposition that someone is there. And you either go in with your holster unbuttoned or with your gun in your hand. But you don't have your gun cocked. There's always the danger that you might trip or hit it on something. If the gun goes off, you might kill your fellow officer. And you have to be extremely careful. If you hear something, you can't go blazing away. You might be shooting a watchman, an employee, or the owner. You only use your gun as a last resort. Once you're inside, you start a systematic search of the place. You work together as a team, searching one area of the building at a time. You check all the places where they might hide, on top of a bunch of cartons, or under a bench. Don't overlook anything. Suspects have been known to squeeze themselves into very small cabinets or to roll themselves up in a rug. They'll try anything to keep from getting caught. Police officer, put your hands up. Put your hands up. Now if I've got one here. Okay, Sarge. Come on out. Keep your hands up. Come on out of there. I don't see any more in there. Okay. Put your hands back up. Once Step the suspect on is apprehended, call your fellow officer for assistance. Make a thorough search of the suspect and properly secure him with handcuffs for safe transportation to police headquarters. Spread those legs. Put your head against the wall. Okay. Shake him down. Give me your left hand here. Give me your right hand. It's not easy to be a good police officer. The oath he takes is not something he can put on or take off like a coat. It carries grave responsibility. It is accompanied by enormous authority. Authority that can be used to benefit and protect society or misused to disgrace a noble profession and violate the constitutional rights of citizens. Once an officer has taken his oath, he has assumed a high office in the eyes of the public. His entire way of life must change. He has voluntarily given up much of his individuality to become a representative of a police organization. The requirements of his profession are highly demanding. He must know and follow the law, understand human nature, and develop efficient methods of patrol and investigation. A great and honorable duty. All right, will you be there? Be there at the northeast corner. We'll... There are many unexpected problems that a police officer has to solve at any minute, any second of the day. These were only a few examples, but actually, there are countless possibilities officers have to face. Juveniles. Shoplifters. Pickpockets. Drunks.
Peter. Reckless drivers. Burglars. Bank robbers. Narcotics. Prostitutes. Sex deviates. Kidnappers. Murderers and demonstrators. Within the next hour, any of you may be faced with the problems that you've just seen. We do everything we can to prepare you in training and to give you the necessary help in order that you can take the correct action immediately. In this film, we show you some of the basic duties of a police officer. The importance and the necessity of cooperation with each other and with the public. A great and honorable duty to be greatly and honorably fulfilled. <laughs>